A bearing puller is made up of parts that fit around the bearing and the shaft. The outside diameter of the bearing determines the proper size for the puller jaws. It's also necessary that the inner plate of the jaws can clear the shaft. The puller must be adjusted so that there is a small clearance between the jaws and the outer bearing race. If the jaws contact the outer race, they could damage it when the bearing is removed. It is actually the inner plate of the jaws that pulls against the inner race of the bearing to remove it. Be sure to select the correct rod length based on the length of the shaft. The rods should be screwed in equally so that the bearing will be pulled off evenly. Use a wrench to tighten the lead screw. A soft metal cap on the end of the lead screw protects against contact with the shaft. The bearing should come off the shaft squarely. If the bearing jams or cocks during removal, stop and readjust the puller. The hydraulic press, shown here, provides support to the bearings while it uses a ram to apply steady, even pressure to remove the bearing from the shaft. A shaft protector at the end of the ram is made of a softer material than the shaft. This way, the shaft won't be damaged when pressure is applied by the ram to remove the bearing. Once bearings have been dismounted, they should be inspected to determine the cause of the failure. In order to determine the exact cause, it's often necessary to use an expert outside source for analysis. However, it's important to check the bearing yourself because certain causes of failure should be accounted for when installing the replacement bearing. You may need to clean the bearing to inspect it thoroughly. However, be aware that you may be rinsing away part of the evidence of failure. Always use clean solvent when rinsing a bearing and hand dry it with a clean lint-free cloth. Once the bearings have been removed and inspected, check the shaft to make sure it's not out of round or tapered. Using a micrometer, measure the journal. Then measure the journal again 90 degrees from the first mark. The two measurements should be equal, otherwise the shaft is out of round. To check for taper, Measure the circumference in at least three places along the journal. Again, the measurements should be equal. To determine the appropriate replacement bearing, first check the identification number on the failed bearing. Typically, you replace like with like. However, sometimes you may replace the bearing with a different kind. In this case, you'll use a manufacturer's catalog to help identify the replacement. The catalogs identify bearings according to type, size, and features. This is a portion of a catalog page for single-row, deep-groove ball bearings. Here, the manufacturer shows where the inside and outside diameter and the width measurements should be taken. For this manufacturer, 6210 is the number which identifies an open bearing, or one without any shields or seals. These are measurements for the inside diameter of bearing 6210. The measurements also apply to the bearings listed below 6210. Interchange or equivalent catalogs are also available to help identify bearings with identical characteristics that are produced by different manufacturers. Once you've selected the replacement bearing, you should inspect it prior to installation. Unfortunately, bearings can be damaged even before they are placed in service. Also, occasionally a bearing may come directly from the manufacturer with a defect. This function key would be used to heat the bearing to a selected temperature and then sustain it at that temperature. The exact temperature that's required to expand the bearing is typically specified by the manufacturer. For maximum efficiency, choose the largest bar that fits through the bore. Larger bearings take longer to heat. Orient the bearing to support the load and allow lubrication. Mount the bearing against the shaft shoulder. Maintain pressure against the bearing to ensure it doesn't move while it's cooling. After cooling, check the bearing with a feeler gauge to ensure the bearing hasn't pulled away from the shoulder. An arbor press is another safe, efficient tool used to mount bearings. Most presses have adapter plates to support different shaft sizes. An arbor press mechanically forces the shaft into the bearing. This is called a press fit. A light coating of oil reduces friction and protects the surfaces. The adapter plate must be the proper size to support the inside race only. 
The bearing should stay square on the shaft while slow, steady pressure is applied. In most cases, bearings should be lubricated after they're mounted. Always follow the manufacturer's guidelines for lubrication. Before reassembly, clean the housing interior and the fittings. Check to make sure the housing is not out of round, tapered or oversized. Damaged housings need to be replaced. Measure the outside diameter of the bearing and the inside diameter of the housing to make sure the clearance fit is as specified. Measure the shaft runout after reassembly to make sure the bearings are properly seated on the shaft and aligned within the housing. After the equipment has been restarted, take the necessary readings to establish new baseline data for the bearings. Give the bearings time to break in with the equipment before taking the reading.